Welcome back, everybody, to the Me and Jesse podcast. My name is Mark Pavlich, and across the way in the Grove, the big, sexy, the one and only Jesse Martino. What's up, everybody? It's Monday night, podcast time. Uh, great guest tonight. But first, <laughs> the Super Bowl <laughs> has been determined. It has been declared, my friend. The Philadelphia Eagles are the 2022 Super Bowl champions. Uh, I... 22 2022 well that's what we call it yeah 23 i guess it is yeah. now but yeah but, but it was yeah, from the act, season you're the 22 actually, yeah. you're actually right that's how they do it yeah eh? but you know what though so you're picking the eagles to i win. think it's gonna be a, a train wreck i i think so too i i this is where we agree because oh really yeah but you know what's weird about it first of all i'm never gonna go for case yeah you hate my mahomes to begin with i'm not a huge yeah. mahomes fan but you know what's the crazy part is mahomes is hurt okay and so is kelsey yeah. So they can they can pretend as much as they want they're not, but that that kid Kelsey Kelsey is hurt. He played yesterday, so I give him props for that. And then uh, Mahomes is really hurt, and the injury that he has takes between six and eight weeks to fix. It's not been yeah, six to eight I, weeks. I, I, I'm not sure like how bad it is. I mean, he you could mm. tell something was up for sure. Yeah, there's something not right. But. I, 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 you know he has two weeks off now. Yeah, right? which is a life. What's it right now is a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. you know there is that, but I do think even if Mahomes is healthy, that Philadelphia defense oh. Oh. absolutely will. He's going to have to move. He's going to have to run yeah. because mm-hmm. that defense, that front line, is scary good. He's going to get murdered. Like it, that's like, what I think. If I, he I think... can't escape, he's in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, he's in big trouble, and it, it's the first time ever to uh, the two Kelsey brothers. There's a Kelsey brother that plays for Philly and Kelsey for KC. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be in the game together against each other, that's which cool. is the fir- first time in history that's ever happened, the Kelsey brothers. so you, And then, listen, you know, to me, Jalen Hurts has to play the best game he's ever played. Yeah, I, absolutely. I'm still, I'm still 50-50 on Jalen. Really? I like, sometimes he looks miraculous. And then there's other times he looks mediocre at best. Yeah. So I I I want Philly to put it on Casey. So like like I, I think you're right. I think the defense is going to steal the show, but you're still going to have to put up 28 points to win yeah. the Super Bowl plus. You know? Yeah, because you know last mm-hmm. night's game, like with the Bengals, like I really the Bengals. I mean, they got to Burrow. They did what they had to do. Yeah. They 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 made a move they sacked him how many times seven or eight times i think it was and so yeah you're not going to do well now how can res- how can mahomes respond if he gets sacked six times that's the other thing like so i i'm a little surprised that i'm surprised Bengals didn't go even bigger i i think oh, casey played them perfectly mm-hmm. but you know it came down to the wires it should have and and, and and i thought it would but but I, I just can't see KC having an answer for, for Philly. That being said, Andy Reid is pretty damn good at what he does. Yeah, he, he is. He definitely is. And But I don't think he'll have time to adjust. That's my opinion. I think he'll he'll get caught. Listen, Philly's coach has been, been laughed at. for. He was right. laughed at when they picked him. No one's laughing anymore, no. okay? <laughs> so, 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 so. You know, Andy Reid is great, but like I said, I, I always saw Casey as, you know, even even the guy that's returning their punts, he's a rookie. Um, yeah. He, 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 he had shaky season this year. These are key little components of, of the game where I, I look at it and I go, well, wait a second now. You got to watch. Now, if Kelsey's not 100%, Mahomes is at 100%. That's a humongous problem with this Philadelphia defense. So... That's yeah. that's how I and, see the Super Bowl unraveling. And, and you know, KC doesn't have the greatest run. Where that's the no. only spot mm-hmm. of Philly's defense. They're like rated 16th, I think, on the season for the, against Correct. the run, Correct. which you know that's the middle of the pack. But if KC doesn't have that great of a run, definitely not as good as the Bengals. No. Then and they're number one in passing and pass rush. Well, I mean. Yeah. The, either they establish that run right away, it, it's otherwise it's over. Over early. Yeah, over I think early. I think it yeah. it, it could over be early. now. You know, again, this is why we play the game because we we need to know what happens. But but I, if I had to pick, which I am, and 
if I had to put a lot of money on, I would have to pick Philly because I just, you know, I wanted to shit on them all season long. You know, when they were 0-7, we're 7-0, and we're like, yeah, whatever, this isn't real. And, hey, they made us all eat our words, which is great because this is what football is all about. You you go in and, and you th- you know, the yeah. Broncos and I mean, the Broncos and the Eagles, if this doesn't show us all as, you know, commentators and analysts and stuff like that, that anything can happen and that our pre predictions are never 100 percent set in stone. This was it. Everybody thought the Broncos would at least be in the show. Yeah. And the Eagles would be lucky if they made the playoffs. Yeah. And the how. Dra- dramatically the two roles have been reversed can it's mind blowing can, can, can we talk about culture that's what it's about in sport yeah. and if you don't if you don't have it i don't care who plays on your team anymore i don't i don't want to hear about fantasy football bullshit on this show <laughs> i want to i want to hear about the culture in your dressing room and that's the difference of who wins it whether it be the nhl nfl nba you'll hear it a million times over most of the time, if you look at the Lakers dressing room, you go, why don't you just hand mail them the, the trophy? It's over. They're going to win for sure. And they're having a term. They're having a hard time being over 500. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so, and then you look at, you look at Denver at the beginning of the season and you go, Oh my God, uh, Russell Wilson with this offensive line. Oh, forget about it. These guys are getting 12 wins for sure. Yeah. Did, didn't happen. Once again, there's a cultural thing when they start looking in coaches' eyes, when they start looking at certain people in the dressing room and, and the people that don't need to talk. And those guys that don't need to talk to just look at you and you look in their eye and you're, you know you're going to war with the right guys. Right. You cannot, you cannot draft that. You cannot buy that. And we found that in sports over and over and over and over again. We've seen it. Look at the Edmonton Oilers this year. Right. Starting to drink the Kool-Aid. They're looking at each other in the dressing room. Oh, the coach is whatever. The, the goalies are whatever. But they're they're starting to get on rolls now because guys are looking at other guys. And maybe this McDavid kid that's supposed to be the greatest in the world is finally said to people in the dressing room, you better wake the F up. Okay. <laughs> I've I've had enough. I'm not going, I'm not gonna just do be like a highlight reel. I need the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And there's yeah. And, and you go around to dressing rooms, and that's what happened in Philly. I mean, they had a coach that people were – He, I remember his press conference where he was actually stuttering. He was, stu- <laughs> he was stuttering, Jesse. So nervous. And he was so nervous, he was stuttering, and people tr- trashed him for, for stuttering, which is ridiculous, but they did. And then, then you see him now in the dressing room with his players, and, man – did they buy in? Yeah, they they've bought in, and uh, you know, and same with KC, they bought into Andy Reid a long yeah, time absolutely. ago. Yeah, we and, can't deny that either. Like KC is yeah, still awesome, right. and That's they should right. be in the show. Like yeah, I would say, yeah. they should be there. Absolutely, well, they should. I they, agree. I, out of I that agree. conference, they they were the best. There's no question. They, they've been the best for five, six, yeah. seven years now, right? So it's not a it's not a surprise if you're if you're in that conference like my Raiders are, and you're not drafting. Or you're not getting ready to beat KC. You don't even field your team. You're wasting your yeah. money. Season ticket holders don't buy tickets <laughs> until these teams understand you have to do this, right? Like, yeah, it's, no, it's, I, it's, I think that's 100 percent accurate. Like, you, you listen. If you roll back the tape at the beginning of the season for football, yeah. what did I say? I said Derek Carr is not a winning quarterback. No. Derek Carr has a low football IQ just like his idiotic brother. I've said it a million times. Am I doing it to be malicious? Absolutely not. I'm doing it because it's a fact. Yeah. And we've all found out it's a fact. Do you see anybody? Yeah, the numbers running? don't lie. No. Do you see anybody running right now to sign Derek Carr? Yeah. No, you don't. No. You don't see anybody running to sign him. Just like I said, he could be a great backup quarterback in most any organization. And I use the word backup, okay? <laughs> not starter. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But look at Jesse. But look at Jesse. It's a fact, right? Yeah. Everybody. No. Hey, do you remember when I said he had a low IQ on Twitter? <laughs> Literally, yeah. people Locked from Reno Nation <laughs> were shitting on me like crazy. He, uh, uh, Derek Carr, his brother, his cousins, they all block me. I think it's hilarious because I said, I said yeah. to Derek Carr, I'm going to be around longer than you will with Raider Nation. So right. you don't have to worry. And it's true. Yep. I still am and you're not. That's so right. what, what I'm trying to explain to people is this is professional sports. Yeah. I'm not here to 
I'm not here to console you. I'm not here to pat your head. I'm here to tell you the truth. Just yeah. like when you watch the Me and Jesse <laughs> exactly. podcast every week. It's the truth. Now, do you like it? No, I don't like it. doesn't matter. I you don't, don't have to like it. But I don't like it sometimes yeah. when I even say it. I'm like, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And yeah. you're going to get that on this show every week. Unfortunately, some people go, well, I can't believe that me and Jesse podcast, the way they talk sometimes. And I said, yeah, I can't believe you're such an idiot that you actually <laughs> believe everything you watch on TSN, ESPN, um, you, you know, all uh, first take, all these other guys, they're, they're soft selling you everything. Don't. Don't watch the Me and Jesse podcast then, because we're not going to soft sell you. We're going to tell you the truth. And heaven forbid, it, the truth hurts. Yeah. And it, and it hurts sometimes. And trust me, as a Raider fan, it hurt to this year because you have Devontae Adams, you have Max Crosby, Josh Jacobs, best rusher in the NFL this year, Josh Jacobs, finished first, as I predicted. Jesse Martin, no. And as you predicted, first not. What? First, he was first for what? First, no. Russian yards. First, first, Josh Jacobs this year. And <laughs> was you he were, actually? You, well, yeah, you were. Sh- go ahead, check. I'm gonna check. Yeah, go ahead. You know, it's funny though. You shit all over him, and I said he'll be number one I by the end of the season. I said that he is a great you quarterback. Said top five. You said top five. Yeah, you top, said top five. five. Well, I said he'll be first. There's nothing wrong with that. And you laughed. And you laughed. <laughs> well, first, yeah. Yeah, for, yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, the most was. rushing yards. Yeah, and then Devontae Adams, and then Max Cross. You have all these pieces, but what did you have? You had Derek Carr throwing the ball to nobody, and that's that's what happened. And and finally, the coach had the nutsack to finally go, well, you know what? It's going to be my job or his job. Well, it's going to be his job. Bounce. Yeah, and, and it was. And it, yeah. it should have been. And it should have been three years ago, probably. Yeah. Let's be real. Oh, like, it should have oh, been. you crazy? Of course it should have been. But you have a guy sitting there going, oh, if I don't play for the Raiders, I don't play for nobody else. And everybody believed that bullshit. But guess what happened? When well, it he doesn't finally, matter. Like, that's him. And, it's and not they true, have to, it's management not, has to finally say, enough is enough, dude. Like, we can't afford to, to do this every year. But did you see, Jesse? He's already canvassing to go play for somebody else right oh, now yeah, of course and is. no one no one's taking him but it's so funny how he was mr i'm never gonna play for nobody else but the raiders i'm not gonna do this I, hey listen it's professional sports don't ever talk like that yeah ask ask ray bork okay ask yeah. the great ray bork he played for the boston bruins he wanted to win the stanley cup with the boston Bruins, but he didn't he had to go somewhere to else go to somewhere win else. that cup and you can't slight him for that, not for one second. No, I don't think so either. And, and again, like, and, you know, so we'll see where Carr goes. I think he will land somewhere. I just don't know what his role will be. Yeah, like, it's called the CFL, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Maybe. Starting quarterback so, uh, starting quarterback for, this, for, for the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Oh, man, if you, you have know? to go to Saskatchewan, that would be yeah. fun. Well, The Rock went there. Well, can you imagine this buffoon ends up in Edmonton? That would be hilarious. Oh, it would be I, funny. I I could heckle him from like, like my home in earshot. Oh, like I, <laughs> me and you would go to the games yeah. just to heckle him. It yeah. would just be hilarious. <laughs> what, what's he gonna do? Yeah. That's what I always said to everybody. You know, he said he wanted an MMA fight one time, and I said, "Oh my God, you you understand what I would do to you at your age? Yeah, He's half my right. age. I would choke you unconscious four ways from Sunday. Yeah, like absolutely. it's it's all joking aside. Like for real, that's what would happen. And I'm like, let's pretend it wouldn't. Like, right? Are you are you crazy? Like he's gonna end up in the CFL. Yeah, it, it doesn't look good for him, and it shouldn't because he's not that good. And and he's no. wrote a career somehow that has survived somehow. And but you know the yeah. the, the the shoe dropped fine. like it it finally dropped for him, and it should have. And and it a, and rightly long, so. Yes, they got to do something time. else there. They they can't wait for yeah. for this to happen. They they have to go out and do something serious to to not lose any more of the talent they have. Rogers could be that guy. I don't know. I, I, it might be for, for at least a couple I, years. I, if he does a two, three year deal, I'm, I'm happy. My, my father will be in misery. Oh yeah. And, well, and, the oh, Packers aren't going to be good for a while now. No, they will be, it'll be a gong show over there. No. Cause Derek Carr could go play for that. Well, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, could you then, imagine? Oh my gosh. That would be great. Oh, <laughs> Well, everybody, uh, thanks for watching right now. We're, we have a great guest coming up. We have none, none other than Kimbo Slice Jr. That's right. Yes. Yeah. The the son of late MMA fighter. I mean, viral sensation. 
oh. Kimbo Slice and, and yeah. really put MMA. Oh, man, he he really did a lot without urban being culture. in. Yes, like urban, it it, it made culture. it yeah, yeah. so that people that weren't really into that could actually watch and mm-hmm. and follow someone, and it was really smart. So so we have him coming up right away on the Me and Jesse podcast. We'll be right back after this. Get ready. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast with Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. Welcome back, everybody, to the Me and Jesse podcast. My name is Mark Pavlich, away in the Grove, the big, sexy Jesse Martineau, and our special guest today, everybody, by popular demand. Now, are you ready, everybody? Kevin Ferguson Jr. slash Kimbo Slice Jr. on the show today on the Me and Jesse podcast. Yes, sir. How, How you, you doing, doing today? today? Yes, sir. I'm doing great, man. I, I just finished this crazy workout. Um, I had like stuff hooked up to me and, and it was like testing all like my, I had to go do everything like full strength. So, you know, I'm a little exhausted, but I'm good. I'm good to go for the podcast for sure. You got to read the fine print. Cause I tell everybody drink an espresso before you get on the <laughs> show, man. You got You got you got to yeah, be definitely, ready. I definitely stopped and got some stuff. <laughs> there you go. Sure. <laughs> well, so they, tell, so, me, tell, me this now, tell me this now, tell me this now, how weird it is training at the body shop. Because if you watch the body shop on TikTok, on Instagram stories, it is a crazy place, man. It is like between yourself, Antonio McKee, AJ McKee, Anthony Pretty Boy, Taylor. Jeez. I mean, you guys got yes, a lot sir. of crazy uh, Quentin Jackson, um, you know, all these We even guys. have his son now. We have his son. We yeah, have I, little Rampage. We got Rampage Junior, too. Wow. It's, cool. so, it's crazy. Yeah, we got we got a squad, man. We got a squad. We, and Joey Davis, we can't forget Joey Davis, 133 and 0 wrestler, 7 and 0 Bellator. So we, right. we got a we got a mean team, and our amateurs ain't nothing to play with either. We got the number one amateur ranked in California right now. He has three belts right now at the wow. amateur division, and then wow. we and then we got another guy who just got another belt last night, well Saturday, that got another belt. So yeah, man, we we got a good solid gym that we don't get credit for, just like how they did my dad. You know, they never gave him credit for anything he did, and it's funny that I'm at a gym that, you know, we don't get the credit we deserve. But, you know, we we, we don't mean – I mean, you got to respect it, though, you know? Like, you have no choice but to respect it because we, we show up in the cage. You know you know what's funny? I would – as you might not know, I used to own the MFC, and I owned the biggest MMA show in the country in Canada for 16 years. Antonio McKee fought for me. Many, many people that you would know fought in my organization. I had it for 16 yeah. years. So one day I'm on a talk show – and I'm with Dana White on the talk show, and I and we were talking about who should be in the UFC, you know. And I said, uh, you know, me personally, I think uh, I think uh, Kimbo Slice should be in the UFC. And he says, Nah, that guy, that's crazy, man. That guy should never be in the UFC. And see, right. I grew up in I grew up in the Windsor, Detroit area. So when I grew up in the Windsor, Detroit area, I I saw in the UFC when I went there. I was in I went to the UFC training multiple guys back in the day. I looked in the crowd; it was all white people. There wasn't one black person. There wasn't one black person in the crowd when I first went to the UFC. I said, you know, if you bring Kimbo in, and your your father always had a nice demeanor about him, even though he was a badass, he he he'll rip people's faces off. He didn't conduct. He he walked very differently. He very he's a very soft person in that light. Who better to bring eyeballs to the UFC than him? You know what I mean? Like, and and people right. said, oh, oh, I'm crazy to talk like that, but then. Then he ended up in the UFC, and you know the rest is history. Yeah, that that I mean that's a, a smart move because um, he had a lot of the inner city uh, crowd, mm-hmm. you know. So he would have brought faces where like nobody, like where I'm from, those guys don't really care about MMA and and all that. But if they see you know my dad in the UFC and they can relate to him, they feel like they can relate to his story. Like you came, you used to sleep in your car, and now you're fighting on the the, the highest level, right. you know, possible. So, sure. 
a lot of guys and a lot of eyeballs was was put on. I mean, think about it. He has one of the highest ratings on C on CBS when crazy um, with, with, with Strike Force. Strike Force. And then when yeah. he and then when he fought uh, in the Ultimate Fighter House is one. That I think it might still be the number one, you know, rating uh, uh, show up, um, that he did out of all of them out of all the Ultimate Fighters. I think his was number one for most views, you know, and that that was because he was on it. Everybody knows that. Like it's no but wasn't it funny when he walked in? I laughed my ass off when he walked in. Did you see the heavyweights faces? They uh, when he <laughs> yeah. when he walked in, they all, everybody's jaw dropped to the ground. Like out of anybody you could have brought in that would freak these guys right. out, it was Kimbo Slice, right? And when he walked right. in, everybody was like, "Oh shit, that's that's him in real life," you know? <laughs> like that's that's how it was, and people didn't understand yeah. that, but. You know, it's funny that you, as now for you going forward, now I know you're doing celebrity boxing. You want to do celebrity boxing, right? And I think that's a fantastic move for you. I think it's a smart move. But how are you going to ab ab abandon MMA? Or are you going to go just do celebrity boxing now? Um. So I, I turned, I never had an amateur, uh, an amateur record. I never fought amateur at all. Um, I had one fight. And I have got a knockout. It went viral and I turned pro. But I, I trained, though. You know, I've been training since I was a kid. So I guess that kind of made up for it. But I, I, I put so much into MMA for about four years. And then I, I had a lot of injuries. My, my last couple of fights, I what well, the two fights ago in MMA, I tore my ACL. I had to get Ugh. a completely re reconstruct, uh, reconstructed knee, which is, which is good. Now I came back from that fight. I came back after that surgery. And one in like a minute, minute thirty. So I, I feel good, but I needed a break from it, you know. So I, I'm gonna go back to MMA because that's just my sport. I love it. I wrestled first, but I mean, it's so much money in this celebrity boxing game, you know. <laughs> like, how can I, how yeah. can I not do it? You know what I mean? Like, I, I actually I have the belt in celebrity boxing. I'll be defending it. Oh, I'll be sweet. Defending it in March. <laughs> it's just in the back seat. March 11th. It's in the back. And, um, <laughs> yeah, March. March 11th um, in uh, Atlantic City. And then I'm also going to be on the Mixers cards in April. So, oh, yeah. Awesome. I, oh, that's I like awesome. boxing, though. You know, boxing is my thing. You and like it more? I don't worry about no elbows. I don't got to worry about knees. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, boxing? <laughs> yeah, boxing. Yeah I, yeah, I love boxing. I love boxing more. I started I, so I started off with in the garage with my dad. He, he had a rope tied up each corner. It was just me and him, and I was just doing head movement the whole time. Head movement, awesome. head movement. That's before I threw any punches. I knew how to slip a punch before I threw a punch. Smart. Right? Wow. Smart. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. And then I started wrestling. So then, and then you know, it all came together. Right. Wow. What was it, it like growing honestly, up? My, in that. With, um, it's kind of it's kind of all I knew. You know, like I never had a job before. This is this is my only job. You know, I saw my wow. dad do it. When I was a kid, I didn't watch cartoons, you know, like most kids, you know, when they, you know how like you, you like, here, here, watch, watch your favorite cartoons. Show yeah. And stop. Be quiet. Like for me, it was fights. Like my dad gave me, I had like an old school DVD player flip and I had a, a highlight of Roy Jones Jr., um, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, and Floyd wow. Mayweather. And wow. I was just watching those guys growing up. So like, it, it's funny. You guys going to see when I really like become comfortable in there. You're going to see everybody's style. You're going to see a little bit of Mike Tyson. You're going to see a little bit of Floyd. You're going to see a little bit of Roy Jones because these are the guys I watched. So I, I, I was mimicking them as a kid. You know what I mean? Like seven years old, like watching these guys. So like the, the styles is, is all like that's it's all, all of them put in one. Who are you fighting in March? Um, so March's celebrity boxing is going to be against uh, some guys. Drew, I, I don't, you know, I don't really. He, he, he's not, it's like, this is the warm up for the April fight. You know, April is going to be a, a big fight for me on Misfits and um, it's going to be huge. You know, I don't know if I could say the opponent yet because uh, no one signed the contract, but right. I talked to the owner of Misfits Mams and he confirmed that I will be fighting in April. So, so you're you know, fighting March uh, and April, yeah. March and April. Yeah. Mm. March right, and April. Yes. Make sure everybody knows on our podcast, That's right. March and April, and we'll, we'll get it out to everybody on Misfit. Misfit. Mar March, March 11th, April 8th. April 8th and May April 8th on Misfit, right? Yeah, in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. Yeah, that's Can awesome. I get? Can I guess? <laughs> I guess the opponent? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, okay, put it like this. Um, my training partner fought him before. Uh -oh. Okay. All right. Pretty uh -oh. boy. 
Still, yeah, oh, pretty pretty I know that. Okay, okay. I ain't gonna say it's in there. Right, right. How, how, it, 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 is his initials uh, TF? No, not TF. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But just know though, it's, it's history behind it. It's history behind it. Oh. It's my gym versus their gym. Scruffles. Um, it's like a rivalry. But I'm just, it, I was never a part of it. But it's my gym, so I guess. But I now, am you a part of it. Yeah. now you are. Now you are. Yeah. Now you are. Exactly. So yeah, this whole, 100%. like the whole, you guys your whole, it out. yeah, your whole gym, like the the press or the popularity or the the hype around it right now is big. I mean, Anthony's out there. We've had Anthony on a couple times, yeah. and, and like just seeing what he's doing, and, 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 and he told us, Antonio he AJ was, was on, and Tony was on. Uh, but we we like you know Anthony told us last time he was on, he's like, hey guys, watch me, watch, watch what happens to this place. We're gonna, everyone's gonna know who we are. And 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 what is the mentality there for you guys? Is it a chip on the shoulder that you like nobody gave you respect over and your and really the generation before you, or is it just like you know what? Let's just go out there and be who we are and let that speak for itself. Um, honestly, for me, I'm kind of um, I'm used to it. I'm used to the, the not getting uh, the recognition that you deserve. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I can't speak for you know my teammates because I know AJ might feel a little different about his dad not getting the respect. You know he deserved but for me i'm kind of used to it you know i don't mind um i don't mind being in the dark as long as i'm successful you don't have to give me the the, the praise or the recognition you know as long as i'm successful at doing what i'm doing i could care less what everybody well, else you thinks. know it's, when you go train next when you're at the body shop tonight or tomorrow the next day you ask antonio what happened yeah. antonio called me on the phone one day and he said mark ufc is never going to take me i go you come fight for me i i'll bet i'll bet my mm-hmm. rolex i'll bet my rolex that they will take you and he said, no way. Right, so right. I, said, I, I said, don't worry, Antonio, watch what I know how to do because I'm not really smart, but I know how to figure shit out. So I said, hey, you know what I'm yeah. going to do? I'm going to bring the only guy to ever beat Jose Aldo at that time mm. to the MFC. And I brought Antonio here and I said, Antonio, forget about wrestling him. You got to beat the shit out of him. Treat it like a street fight. When you get him on the ground, smash him in the face, <laughs> mess him up. The guy comes right. here, Antonio kicks the living shit out of him. My phone rang so fast, like this. Yes, I said, Antonio was getting out of the ring. I go, you want you want the phone now or wait till later? You, you know what I mean? That's how fast they called after right. we did that. So what I'm trying wow. to tell you is, Antonio. Uh, the problem was, Antonio was already older when he got to there. It's a shame he wasn't 10 years younger when he should have been there. But he came right. to the MFC to fight for me. To, and I told him, I said, Antonio, we're going to cause so much shit. You'll see. They're all gonna look this way, and they but, did. But that's what his son is for. That's what his son is for now, though. You yeah. know, his son could like redeem that. And then they I got agree. another little mate, and they got Mason. They have listen. I I have never seen a kid <laughs> so young throw up an armbar to a triangle. It's the craziest <laughs> thing you could possibly see. I've seen he, it on the line. He was line. he grew he grew up in the gym. He grew up in the gym. He he was crawling on the mats when we was like doing yeah. our thing. Wow. He he was three years old throwing up triangles, man. It was it was insane to see that. And now he's like he's like a little be- a little beast, a little prodigy, man. He's gonna be a champion for sure if he decides to fight. And that's yeah. AJ's son, right? No, Antonio's uh, son. No, that, Antonio's son. Well, you, you would think you would think it was AJ's son. But yeah. it's Antonio's son. Okay. <laughs> it looks so much similar, but no, it's it's coach is Antonio. You know, okay, yeah. His son. Yeah, yeah. AJ's brother. Right. Doesn't, doesn't also Z- brother, doesn't yeah, Zion doesn't Zion Clark fight with you guys too? Yep, Zion trains with us also. Yes, what's that? What's that like? Can you talk about yeah, that? Zion. Um. So Zion, man, he he's like, like you say, no excuses. He got a tether on his back, and he really he really lives by you know that 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 phrase, no excuse, because you can't tell him no to anything, or you can't tell him. I don't know about that, or I don't think you could do it. He gets mad, he gets an attitude, and he wants to prove you wrong, you know? When he when he decided to take that MMA fight, you know, that's my boy. You know, we, we became close, so, I, I you know, I have feelings for him as a brother. So when when I when he said he wanted to do an MMA fight and he was about to sign it, my first Crazy. thing is, I was like, no, bro, you cannot do it. You <laughs> cannot do it. Like, please don't do it. And he was like, bro, I could do it. Trust me, I'm going to win. But I was like, you know what? Okay, now I'm not going to say no, no, no anymore. I'm going to support now, him. Now, figure it know? out. So yeah. now I, I, right. So when we trained, I, I was on him, you know, I was like, I, I couldn't take it easy because I didn't want him to go out there and get hurt or, you know, this guy to do something crazy. So we, we had to put it on him a little bit, you know, and he went out there and won and, and I keep no excuse. He did it. 
was that was that emotional for you? Was that like when he won? Uh, of course, man. Like, like, look yeah. at him, man. He, you know, he does his thing, and you know, I mean, look, I, he, he's just different. You know, like he, he's very, he's very like smart and intelligent. He knows how to market himself, and he works hard. He works harder than you know people that 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 have everything. You know, he works harder than him. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. When he comes in the gym and train, everybody step it up a notch because you know we got Zion here. You know, like mm. it's time to step it up. We can't be slacking awesome. if you see Zion giving it his all. Why, why, why are we not giving it our all? You know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's part of the team whole the, t- the whole team idea, though, isn't it? Because that you know you bring a guy in like that that's like, no, I'm doing this 100, percent and it brings everyone. You know, where maybe he lacks, it makes up for in this other area, and vice yeah. versa. Like you know, maybe. You know, you look at this right. guy and like, hey man, I I could give more then, and and it's interesting how that team dynamic yeah. works. Then, what would you say is your was your big inspirations growing up? And let's say you ran into a hard time in your life, what helped you get through that? Um, I never, I'm, I never feel sorry for myself, no matter like what situation that I'm in. You know, I'm not gonna like be sad about it. I'm just gonna figure it out. You know, that was always like how I did things and that's still how I do things now, you know, so I, I, I won't be down on myself. Even when I, I couldn't walk and my ACL was messed up, I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. Hmm. I woke up every day and I went to therapy and I, and I got right. And in nine months I fought again and won. So, you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel sorry for myself, you know, and no matter what I'm going through, I'm a, I'm a push through and find a way. Was that because something that you just ways to do things. Was that something you figured out along the way or like, was that always just something you've always looked back in your life and like, this is how I am? Um, I guess it would be, you know, just growing up the way I grew up, you know, I was just, I was always the best at everything I did. You know, I was the fastest in school. I was the the, the best running back. I never worked hard though, you know? So I could say like, I learned how to work hard now, you know, like even right. honestly, like being honest, like a hundred percent real, all my fights in MMA, I did not train for. I worked out for them, but I didn't train for them. You know, it's it's a big difference when you train for a so fight. True. Right. I worked out to get in shape. I got in shape for these fights. You know, I didn't work hard to win. I didn't really, I didn't really care about that. I just wanted to do it just because. But now, I'm working hard now. You know, my talent and my hard work is coming along together and on one accord. And it's gonna be a problem now. Like it's a whole new, a whole new era. That's why I'm glad I, I took that break that I did because now I understand how to work hard. You know what I mean? And now my talent and my hard work is working together and it's going to be a big problem now, you know? What's big what's problem. your end What's your end goal in celebrity boxing? Like who would be the end goal? Would it be a Jake Paul? Would it be a, like, what is the end goal now? Like, um, I'm man, honestly, I have so much going on far as like creating businesses and, uh, just doing so much outside of fighting that uh, um, I never really looked at, well, for now, I haven't looked at an end goal. I just want to win as much as possible and make as much money as possible from the sport, you know? So that's why I'm not going to really give it like my all. Like I'm going to give it my all, you know, like I'm going to put every, I'm going to leave it all out there, leave it all in the ring, leave it all in the cage. And then I, and then I'm going to do a bare knuckle fight to, to put the icing on the cake. (laughs) That's another world, eh? Oh my gosh. Yeah, we had we had Alan Dangerous. Belcher. Dangerous. Alan Belcher was on our show, and he's fighting coming up. Mm. Like, and he's on our show again coming up in a month or in a week or two. But it's funny because he yeah. he was talking about how different the mentality needs to be for bare knuckle, and he's fighting for the bare knuckle heavyweight championship in bare at the bare knuckle uh, event, and he was saying how it's so much different than MMA and boxing. It's very different. <laughs> hey, listen, completely different. You can get hit with a punch at 10% and get cut open. Right. Like, there's That's nothing to play with, man. You see, okay, put it like this. Did you guys watch the MVP versus Mike Perry fight? I did. Yeah. yeah. Insane, right? Like, yeah. insane. I, I don't think MVP would do another, another no. Bernal fight. <laughs> no. Honestly. He's traumatized there's, for life. Traumatized no for life. Yeah. No, uh, that messes 100%, you up. 100%, 100%, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not like when my dad did it. Like, when he did it in the backyard, it was different. You know, something was different about it. Like, they made it, uh, they made it, you know, a sport. They made it legit, but it's not the same. You know, it's, it's, no. it's something just, it's just not the same. It's not the same. I, I don't want to exaggerate. You know? I, I watched your dad's videos. I don't want to exaggerate. At least a few thousand times. And um, I watched right. him. Like, it was weird. Like, for, like, for, 
I, I st basically started MMA in Canada, one of the people that started it. And as I was going on, people were like, Mark, did you see Kimbo Slice? And I would be like, run to go see his videos. And I would obsessively watch them. And I'd watch how he would move. And it was funny because he had move he had movements of professional boxing back then. Even when he was right. fighting, you know, like he didn't, his head was, he never left his head, you know? And, and people were like, yeah. oh, you know, I wonder if he could cross over. And unfortunately, in, he died way too young, way too young. And, right. and, and, and because I still think we would have seen him do bigger things. I really believe that. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, this this was his, this would have been his era for what's going on right oh, now. Yeah. As totally. As like the totally. YouTube crossing over. Oh. It's weird, isn't it? I mean, but there's no, there's, yeah, there's really no heavyweight YouTuber guys into like how, what he would have did. It, even in the bare knuckle scene, I think he would have made more money like with the boxing without, like he didn't have to do the, the whole yeah. bare knuckle thing because like boxing is where he's at. You know? like, yeah, he would have been, he could have been the main draw. Oh, you know, for sure. Yeah. hundred percent, you know. How but, much do you like, yeah. you know, how much, because obviously like, you know, you think about it, like you want to be your thing too, but then your dad's there as well. Like how much of that plays in, in your mindset with, you know, maybe not necessarily, but you know, I don't want to talk about this so much. I want to focus on me now. Yeah. Like, does that play with you at all? Um, no, it did more when he was alive because you oh, know, oh, I, I tried yeah. to do everything on my own. Mm. And then he told me to, to, he's like, listen, you have a name, like use it, use what I, use what I built. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, and I didn't want to, when he was, I didn't want to, when he was alive, I was like, you know, I want to do my own thing. I mm. got it. I don't need help. You know, I was like trying to prove a point, you know, but you know, towards the ending of everything, uh, we talked a lot, you know, the week, uh, we talked a lot. And, um, I think I realized that he created something that 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 a father was supposed to do and pass right. pass the torch pass something down create something to give to your 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 seeds you know your kids so um now i i want to talk about it in every interview honestly hmm. in every interview ask me about my dad please like i would love to talk about him you know wow. when i fight that's when my name is kimbo Slice jr you know i got that tat tattooed on me you know what i mean yeah. like I am my dad's son. Like I am my father's legacy. I love it. So I love it. Don't talk about me. Like, le like leave me out of it. Let's talk about my dad and what I'm gonna do to mm. continue what he built. You know, and that's why I'm at with things. You know, everything I'm doing now is gonna be Kimbo, Kimbo Junior. You know. Yeah. And, and that's just how it goes. I mean, you he's know, in the back. I, I have him in <laughs> right here in the back. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, little, yeah. Uh, this bobblehead. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's awesome. That's great. Legit. You know, I I think that's something important because you know. I, you know, I lost my father 15 years ago now, but, you know, I was 27, I think, when he passed away. And, and you know, it's obviously you don't really know what to think at, at that point. But a bigger a bigger picture thing is, like, now what do I do? Because I think at that age, like, yeah. you're really just discovering that I'm an adult now. I'm a man now. And, and you start to look back. Because there is that time when you look at your dad, you're like, oh, dad, like, <laughs> whatever it's not like that anymore i'm gonna do my own thing i'm gonna do it better than you did which is actually what they wanted is actually what our dads wanted was us to be right. better yeah but you sure. don't really think that and then you know something tragic takes place and you're like oh shit i why didn't i do this before but that that is kind of life right. isn't it yeah man it is it is uh like I had did an interview and I, and you know, people ask me like, they're like, what do you think? Do you think you're better than your dad? And I'm like, honestly, yeah, I think I'm better than my that's dad great. because that's what he wanted me to do. I, yeah. He wanted you to be better. Say, Any I'm real saying, good dad wants, wants you to be better. He wanted me. Yeah. He, right. And every aspect of life, like not just in the ring, like the ring is whatever. It's 15 minutes, 20 minutes and it's over. Like yeah. that, you're done. You know, and life is where it really counts at outside yeah. the ring. Who are you? You know, like what kind of person are you? Like, what do you do when no one's looking? You know what I mean? Like, so with me, like sometimes I go through my days where I'm like, ah, you know, maybe I don't want to be like that or maybe I do. But I, at, the, at the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm always try to be better than him. No matter what I do, I want to be better. I want to have a better car. <laughs> I want to have a better wife. I want to have, I want to fight better. You know, I just want to do things better because if he is watching, he's going to be proud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if he's watching and he's looking down, he's proud for sure. Because he, I can't be the same. There's no way I want to be the same. I, I got to do things different, yeah. better, and, and build a legacy and, yeah. and make it make it better. You know? How That's is how is how is Antonio McKee? What would what, what would be his position in your life? Just a trainer, or would he be more like an uncle to you? Like, 
Yeah, I see. That's what I tell people. You know, I I, I told him. I, I I told Coach. I said, Coach, honestly, you don't have to ever. You don't have to never coach me again. I can find a new coach tomorrow. You know what I mean? And and if I move from California, I will have no choice but to find a new coach. But me and him has a that like, like you say like that uncle connection. Like yeah, honestly, they're so him and my dad was so similar. They would have been they would have been best friends. Honestly, <laughs> like wow. the way coach is, he keep it real. He don't sugarcoat any. He don't sugarcoat anything. He's gonna tell you what you're doing wrong, even if you want to, you don't want to hear it or not. He's gonna tell you about yourself, especially if you're doing something wrong that's not right. You know, and he's one of the only. I, that's he's why one... I respected him, and that's the reason why I came to this gym. Yeah, he's one of the few fighters that I actually spent social time with. Like very few people that I had fight in my organization. I, I as fighters, I I crossed over okay. and. Like I, I actually spent time with Antonio. Like when, when we went to California, we, we, we like hung out and stuff like that. And it was like, it was interesting to be around him. Cause I actually realized that, you know, I used to think he was crazy, but then I realized it, he wasn't crazy. He was, it was just the way it was going in his brain, you know, like how he, he, he thought of things. And I guess his madness is telling, you know, the truth now, because you look at all the great fighters that came from his place. It's super, it's super exciting. Now, like I told you, like I said, man, I, I, I'm training hard now. So I'm, I'm actually excited to see what I'm capable of when I put it, when I give it 110%, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, excited to see what I'm capable of and what I can do. And, and I have power, man. I have heavyweight power. I, I hit these guys in MMA and I don't even connect. I haven't connected one to none of my MMA fights. It grazes wow. them and knocks them down. So I'm just, I just want to punch somebody. Full. I just want to hit somebody clean. I just want to give them a <laughs> nice it. clean one and see what happens, you know? And in boxing, you, you can't run too much. I'm going to land it. I'm going to land. Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah. That's going to happen. I'm going to yeah. land. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. land something, you know? So it's going to be fun. It's not MMA. Ain't no grabbing. Ain't no jujitsu. You <laughs> No, I'm going to land a punch and I know how to clinch. I do MMA. So it, I'm excited to see when I hit somebody with, uh, with this full power, know what's going to happen i did it once in mma and i knocked somebody out cold so i'm i'm looking for knockouts now at this point yes and i'm when i'm walking forward i'm walking everybody down do you spar do you ever spar with anthony taylor oh yeah i spar with him all the time yeah <laughs> i spar with him all the time that's that's my guy man that's my yeah. guy oh good well we, we thank yeah. you so much for for taking the time and joining us this evening after your you know training day and uh, you know, we yes, look forward yes, to yes. we're seeing this and and really like thanks so much to to the to the crew too because you guys are awesome. Everything you're putting out is awesome. We love seeing you guys pop sure. up in the news and, no, we, and we don't, it's we great. We didn't drink I love the it. We, we didn't no, drink the we just, either. We know we know the body <laughs> shop. We know the body shop. We know all the guys there. We know what listen. I'm we're gonna have to make the homage one day. We're gonna walk ourselves on down to the body shop. When I walk in being the Canadian godfather of MMA, <laughs> I'm going to walk in and I'm telling you right now, I can't wait to come to the body shop to see everybody because your gym deserves the credit. Mm -hmm. You guys all for all the hard work you guys are all putting in with everybody sure. that trains at your place. You guys deserve it. It's going to happen. You'll see it. You know, people talk, want to talk about these so-called gyms in, in MMA and boxing and blah, blah, blah. But I know everybody marches over to that body shop all the time. They sneak in the back right. door and come and train with you guys. They do. Yeah. I know that. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. A, a lot of big names too. A lot of big, big names. names do, big names. Yep. Same thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> for sure. Well, thanks you so much for uh, joining us on the me and Jesse podcast. Uh, we look forward Definitely. to that coming Definitely. up and, uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day, sure. but but uh, stay in touch. We'd love right. to see what goes on in the future. Well, thanks so much, Kimball Slice Jr., for joining us. Man, uh, how great is that? Like, it's got to be tough, and and I really appreciate what he said about his dad because you wonder sometimes, like, do you want to be in the shadow of this? And I think well, that's you, a, sometimes I, you have no choice. Yeah, it, like, it is like it, one of those things where. But he had yeah. a really good approach about it. Like before, yeah, okay, you don't, and then you realize what you lose, and then you're like, yeah, well, I should have just done this the whole time. I should have just been the way I am now before this happened. And well, he is now, and and he and he said like I I love talking about my dad. Like ask me about my dad. I want to talk about him. And That's and awesome. yeah. yeah, that was incredible. I love that. And and hey, that whole gym and the culture there. They talk about culture in the beginning of the show. Like that whole culture that they're breeding there is awesome and you got crazy. some amazing fighters and more so even if there's you know even if the talent 
goes up and like this between fighters, the culture is always up here. Yeah. And, you know, you do have to give Antonio McKee a lot of credit for that. Like I said before, like people used to laugh at him and joke around because right. he, you know, he's crazy. Right. <laughs> but is this crazy really crazy anymore? Right. Maybe it's not right. Like maybe like his son is a world champ. Um, you know, they have uh, Anthony Taylor. They have they have a bunch of people that fight out of there. Kimbo Slice Jr. Yeah. They ha- it's just a really cool gym, but there's there's more there. There's like there's guys that we don't even, you and I don't even know about right. yet that are just there. And it's uh, and a lot of guy Quentin Jackson trains yeah. out of there. I mean, a lot of guys come through the back door, you know, because they're like, oh, we don't want our gym to find out we're training with Antonio. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they are. They yeah, are. Yeah. You know, and that and that proves again that there was something there that that Mm -hmm. antonio has and is is teaching and and you can't deny that you can't deny that with the success that they're having that the culture works the culture actually is something that breeds better fighters really because the mentality and how many people have we had that have been in mma that have been on the show and actually in all sports that say how much the mental side of the game is a big deal it's it's yeah. in fact probably most of the deal. Yeah, I don't Training even want to talk like when we hear, when we hear about tra- trade deadlines and stuff now, I don't even want to hear about that bullshit. It's about you better ha- you better get inside your room with your players and find some way to get everybody to connect because yeah. everybody knows how to play hockey, everybody knows how to play football. Everybody was an all-star wherever they came from, whether yeah, you played football right. or hockey, you played basketball, you were you were you were you, you were the were best the, in your school your you, whole life growing up. 100% yeah. you were you were the, you were the letterman person in high school, you were the person in, you were great in college, but then you get in, into professional sports and then you find out that everybody was great where they came from. So that's not the problem. Everybody knows how to make, uh, you know, do a slap shot, a wrist shot. Everybody knows how to pass the puck. That doesn't matter anymore. You got to get guys that love yeah. being around each other, guys that love winning for each other. And that's who wins the Stanley Cup. That's who wins the Super Bowl. Every time when you see at the Super Bowl at the very end of the, at the end, and they're all talking about stuff, what are they talking about? How much they love each other. Yeah. They, every time you, yeah. you see it. How much hey, they, and you know it's would... it's interesting because you see, I remember back in the day and that wasn't that long ago let's say 15 mm-hmm. years ago teams would do that like team building stuff all the time they would eat Correct. together they would travel together they would do it it seems like for some reason that a lot of teams now just let the players do what they want and yeah and it doesn't work we've seen it and it's I, a mistake. I actually do think going yeah. back to the others thing I think that was a big part of the problem before they would let certain players do what they wanted, not be with other people and, and that kind of thing. And it just doesn't work. You, you can't be like that. You can't, you can't have that. You need that gelled system together. You need that, that camaraderie together. And you don't have to love everybody. Not everybody has to be your best friend, but you do need to understand each other to a point where you would go to the trenches and bleed for the other guy if you had to. Mm -hmm. And, and that you can't, teach that you can just create opportunities for that to naturally happen and i feel that a lot of teams now weren't bothering but now you can start to see the resurgence of you know that thing like hey you know what we got away from this because we thought it was like you know the progressive thing to do and it just isn't working and and i remember one like i remember the canucks vancouver canucks a few years ago Mm -hmm. they were horrible and they started to turn it around. And here's what they did. They actually, they used to let all the players bring their like Xboxes and Playstations. They played Fortnite all night on the road. And so now they made a rule back then that you can't bring that with you. And you can't play games during road trips. And their record got better. And they started to play better as a team because they forced them or created the space for them to be together more and to be interacting with one another more. And it translated directly to performance on the ice. And and you, and you start to add those things up and you're like, okay, I get this. I remember there was a really great story about an English cycling team and they, they used England used to be great in the Olympics in cycling. And then for a while, I think it was in the early two thousands, maybe they, they tanked. They were very, very bad. And they knew the London Olympics were coming and they wanted to have a great showing there. And so they got this coach and the coach was like, let's just change, you know, 
you think someone's going to come in and like blow up the organization and redo everything. But no, this guy just said, let's just change things by 1% at a time. Things like, Hey, what do you, what pillow do you like to use? Oh, I remember yeah. the story. And they, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would bring that. They would actually yeah. then start it to bring mattresses with them when they were touring around so that everything was like home. And then they were like saying, okay, what about dinner time and stuff like that? It's like, well, we need to have like, meals together we need to like build these but it was just tiny little things that they created space for that built this team and they actually ended up being great at cycling again so the same kind of thing translates with the team sports and you see it starting more and more and more hey the team's out today doing this and you're like oh what's the point of that it's like no there's it might be a one percent step but it's building towards something bigger and if you can add 50 of those one percent things in well, you're already 50% closer to the goal. So right. I, I think that, you know, talking about the gym, talking about what, what um, Kimbo Jr. said, like that culture that people are trying to create is so important. And you're not oh. going to win a championship unless you have it. That's for sure. It's, uh, well, you know what, everybody? Thanks so much for watching tonight. Don't Thank forget, you so much. next week we have Alan Belcher on yes, the show. Do. Return, Alan Belcher Part 2, um, you know, UFC fighter, now bare-knuckle. Uh, Dominator. Going for the, dom- just killing guys. <laughs> so he's he's going to be on the show next week. He, he's a fantastic guest. Uh, there's certain people you want back, and yeah. I really wanted him back. And, and there's something really super special about Alan. And... Um, He's gonna. Be, he's fighting for the title in bare knuckle, like yes. at the end of the at the end of February, I believe. But he 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 was gracious enough. That he's gonna be coming back on the show. And don't forget, guys, this segment was brought to you by Backscape. Oh my God, the, this product now is beyond innovative. It is it is beyond something that every male needs to purchase immediately. And I'm not saying that to to, to sell you on this product, but you let me know, guys at home, when when back hair ever became sexy. It is not. <laughs> it's not. It, it, it is not. It's disgusting, right? So get out. You know, you forget about the hand shaver crap you're trying to do. Cut yourself or all the rest of the your stuff. Significant get other your, to do it. Yeah, which is totally not cool. Get yourself a backscape today. We, we they're a proud sponsor of the Me and Jesse podcast, and we we are super excited to have them involved with us for the sole purpose of hey, it's 2023, everybody. Back hair is not cool. Hashtag right. that. All right, <laughs> and don't forget don't forget our great sponsors at Crystal Glass. Crystal Glass, your clear choice for all your glass needs. Call three ten glass or go to crystalglass.ca. That's right. Well, Mark. Super Bowl Sunday next week, or not next week? Sorry, in two weeks' time. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. It's weird how they now. It's weird because it used to always be the first week of February. Now, it's yeah, not, they bumped so. it back. It must be because of the yeah. schedule, right? So they yeah. added another whatever games. And, That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I, I could see that even being later, as they if they go to eighteen, and then if they we talked about it before <laughs> about international play, you're oh, gonna have please, to figure please. stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish. <laughs> well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week when Ellen Bel- Belcher joins us. Until next time, that's Mark Pavich. I'm Jesse Martineau. This has been the Me and Jesse Podcast. Thanks for watching the Me and Jesse Podcast. Follow us at Facebook.com slash Me and Jesse.